Now on Nightside, fencing around Camp Hope, the, the new curfew meant to keep campers and the community safe. And out goes the rain and in comes some more toasty weather. I'm tracking a warming trend tonight in your first alert forecast. Hurricane Ian hit South Carolina today as those evacuated from Florida return home. You're watching 4 News Now, Nightside. The pitch from Acevedo. A drive deep to right field. Down the line. The Mariners win this game 2-1. The dream lives. They're going to the playoffs. The drought is over. I guess he said it all there after 21 long years the drought is finally over the Seattle Mariners are headed to the playoffs good evening thanks for joining us I'm Aaron Luna I'm Kirsten O'Connor we have Alex Crescenti here with us of course and Alex this is over two decades in the making yeah I was nine years old the last time this happened and an emotional 24 hours for many people here in the Pacific Northwest Seattle entered the day with the magic number standing at one so all they needed to do was either have Baltimore lose or they beat Oakland it was the latter here because the Orioles take took care of business against the Yankees earlier tonight so it's up to the M's to do it and tied up in, at one a piece in the ninth, Cal Raleigh delivered with the walk-off home run to send Seattle into the postseason. And I think it's safe to say they're going to be partying late into the night in the Emerald City. The players and coaches already got a head start in that locker room. And after the game, the manager, Scott Service, praised his team for the way they were able to end this drought, the way they played all season long, resilient. But he told the crowd they want more than just a wild card spot. They care about playing the game the right way and they care about representing the city of Seattle because of you. Every day when the game starts, I look up those banners. We need to add another one. Now with the win, Seattle moves into the second wild card spot in a game and a half out of Toronto with six games left to play. So there's a few combinations of matchups that can still happen at this point and an outside shot. They could even be hosting that opening round series. So we're just going to have to wait and see for over the next week. Matt Gray, your New York Metropolitans, they already clinched. <laughs> yes, we're, we're just in a, we're in a heavy division fight. And by the way, Cal Raleigh, FSU. That's right. Baseball player. You get boys from Tallahassee, good thing happen <laughs> to your sports team. I'll tell you that right now. Hey, break out the sweaters in Sandpoint. My goodness, 46 degrees already. The clearing skies really meant some parts of our region have cooled off super, super quick tonight. 50s in Spokane, low 50s in Coeur d'Alene. About to drop into the 40s in St. Mary's tonight. Much warmer, meanwhile, further down in elevation. Omax, 60 degrees at this hour. Going to see a little bit of cloud cover swinging back over Spokane and Coeur d'Alene as we head through the uh, late night and early morning swinging through uh, Montana and headed back our direction. Not going to bring any rain on the way, but we will see a little bit more cloudiness as we're getting up early in the morning for you early risers. So upper 40s in the morning and then very quickly rising into the 60s as we get closer to lunchtime. That's the first half of your day. It, it is expected to be really, really nice. So there you go. Lots of 40s on the board for your lows for this evening. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the program, we're talking about a warming trend. Strong high pressure going to park itself over the western United States. Kick out that rain-producing storm we got yesterday. And this one is going to be sticking around for a while. We'll preview that in your weekend forecast and show you how long the warm weather sticks around. Coming up. Matt, thank you. Well, scenes like this today all across Florida as people come back to look at what's left of their homes or reunite with loved ones. This woman met up with her family for the first time after surviving Hurricane Ian in a house near the beach. Ian slamming back ashore today near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina as a Category 1 hurricane with 85 mile an hour winds. Meanwhile, staggering damage in Florida as officials assess the damage, the death toll rising to 33, making Ian the deadliest storm to hit the state in 60 years. New on Nightside, ABC's Morgan Norwood reports from Venice, Florida. Tonight, Ian making landfall near Georgetown, South Carolina, coming in as a Category 1 hurricane with winds at 85 miles per hour. Roaring on shore in South Carolina's low country at the worst time during high tide. Sheets of rain rushing into this garage as Ian roars ashore making landfall here in South Carolina. 
Meanwhile, in southwest Florida, Ian, now the deadliest storm to hit the state in 60 years. Is there anybody else? No, it's us two in the north. No one else. Okay. Sparking a one in 1,000 year flooding event. Since the storm made landfall, we've uh, saved 117 lives. New body camera video shows deputies desperately trying to save a woman trapped in raging floodwaters, forming a human chain using a rope. Wait, you're all right? Pulling the woman to safety, the water 10 feet deep. The appalling damage coming into sharper focus. Homes shattered, an army of power crews fanning out across the state, racing to restore electricity. And here in Venice, Florida, during the height of the storm, a transformer bursting into flames, the fire then spreading to these homes. And now this is all that's left. If we had stayed, we may not be here because we'd have been sleeping in the back of our home and the, as quick as this came. I'm not sure we would have got out. The president vowing the federal government will cover the cost of the cleanup and speaking with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis again today. At times like these, Americans come together. They put aside politics. They put aside division. And we come together to help each other. Ian now losing strength after making landfall, but the storm continues to bring extreme weather to the southeast. Here in Florida, the road to recovery just beginning. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Venice, Florida. Well, back at home, there's a fence around the perimeter of Camp Hope signaling changes could be ahead. One of those changes is a possible curfew. In preparation, Wash Dot, Jules Helping Hands, and people at Camp Hope have been cleaning up extra trash and rearranging RVs around the camp's perimeter. The goal is from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., no one will be able to go in or out. Security with Jules Helping Hands will be at the three entry points of the camp to enforce the curfew. And if people living in the camp don't follow these rules, they will be asked to leave. WashDOT contractors were on site putting up that fence this morning. The fence is just part of the Department of Transportation's next few steps to keep Camp Hope from growing and to improve security for both Camp Hope uh, campers and neighbors. We're going to work with them as much as they can. They all understand the rules that are coming along with this, which is also a good neighbor agreement. But if they choose to leave, we'll make sure that we find them a safe place to go and we'll still follow them with services. Washdot says they are actively working on a timeline to remove RVs, implement a badging program, and increase security in the camp and the surrounding neighborhoods. Well, a building that's been trying to operate as a homeless shelter since August 19th has now been cleared out by the city after reportedly being in violation of several city codes. City officials cited fire code and food safety violations before issuing a notice to vacate. The building is located on 2nd in Monroe. It housed 72 homeless people before being vacated. The city cited the building to be in violation of several fire and health codes, saying it's also in need of a fire suppression system. The building's owner, Ronald Nelson, argues the building is protected as an RCW, which essentially allows for emergency exemptions to be made to the city code when it comes to housing the needy. The city countered, saying Nelson was utilizing this building with mixed use, meaning the building wasn't strictly being used as a shelter. It was also acting as Nelson's house, which disqualifies an exemption to those codes. It is no different than any of the churches around here that have sleeping quarters for their pastors. Absolutely no different. It's not a single family residence. It's a place for the pastor to lay his head. The building must come up to code before it's reopening. You can read more about this on our website, kxly.com. Well, there is now a lit up billboard driving around campus at the University of Idaho displaying pro birth control signs like these telling people they can still access birth control plan B and abortion pills in Idaho. The moving billboard was paid for by Mayday Health and is in response to Idaho's anti abortion laws. Those include state employees from promoting or endorsing abortion or emergency contraception. And it also includes employees at the University of Idaho. But the university says the law doesn't specify what is considered promoting abortion. Mayday Health says it believes the First Amendment protects the right to share information and educate students about the right to an abortion. New video tonight of the recovered parts of the float plane that went down in the Puget Sound earlier this month. Emergency management crews confirm the bodies of six passengers have been recovered from that wreckage. But it could take a while before we learn who remains or who the remains belong to. Ten people were killed, including a Spokane civil rights activist. That's Sandy Williams. Her partner was also killed. She's a retired school teacher, Patricia Hicks. 
Two people are now facing charges after police in Sandpoint say they seized what they believe is fentanyl, heroin, and other dangerous drugs this week in a series of search warrants. Police say the raid was in response to a couple of fentanyl overdoses in North Idaho involving a teen who did recover and a 21-year-old who died. This is a look at some of what police took off the streets. You're looking at what are known as blues on the streets as well as skittles. Both are suspected of being forms of fentanyl. The pills commonly have the letter M stamped into them on one side and the number 30 on the other. Daryl David of Bonners Ferry and Rachel Straley of Spokane were both arrested, cited, and released for meth and drug possession. Sandpoint police say more charges are likely after they get the lab test results back on those pills to confirm that they are in fact fentanyl. Police say they joined DEA agents in tracking that pair down at a motel and searching a separate home this week to find the suspected fentanyl as well as heroin meth and other drug paraphernalia. Well, starting tomorrow, you will be able to use your phone to pay to get on the bus using the new connected fare system. That's convenient. This is how it works. You can create an account on the STA Connect app. There, you'll have access to eConnect cards that you can load up with money using a credit or debit card. STA is also expanding its reduced and zero fare options. Anyone 60 or older or people with disabilities get a 50% discount. We have much more coming up on 4 News Nightside. Including a nifty tool to see leaves change across the country. That'll be fun. And we give you a preview of the Fall Festival at Walter's Fruit Ranch. And Friday Night Sports Extra returns. Alex Crescenti's back with us bringing the highlights from high school games across the Inland Northwest. Nightside will be right back. Track live radar on the 4 News Now weather app. 4 News Now. Is brought to you by Wendell Motors. Pergo Elements Wet Protect, the right kind of waterproof. Pergo Elements. Come see us at Floor and Home. Let us help create your space. My husband has diabetes. Even with health insurance, we're having a hard time affording our medications. Thankfully, we have Patty Murray fighting for us in the U.S. Senate. She kept at it till Congress finally lowered the cost of prescription drugs. And capped insulin for seniors at $35 a month. Now we'll save thousands every year. We know when Patty is back in the other Washington. She is working for us. I'm Patty Murray, and I approve this message. Need tonight, it's Kimmel's final night in Brooklyn. And I wish we could stay longer, but it's time to go back to our chihuahuas and yoga mats. Plus, Jason Bateman and the Jimmys help out a local sandwich shop. Your name is Jimmy, you eat free. Wait, we can't afford that. Jimmy Kimmel Live from Brooklyn, new tonight on ABC. Some days your body is a temple, and some days the temple wants sugar. You might relieve stress naturally on Monday and plan for it on Tuesday. Because being human isn't always so fries or salad. Sometimes it's... Both. So relax with essential oils or a glass of cap. I'll sleep with melatonin and wake up to caffeine. With traditional medicine and alternative remedies, there's no wrong way to treat life at Rite Aid. And now get your flu shot with easy scheduling, fast appointments, plus walk-ins available daily. Oh, life. We know what it means to be where you belong, around familiar friends, connected to community. It's why we're committed to delivering world-class health care from the comfort of home. Providence. We see the life in you. Pergo Elements Wet Protect. The right kind of waterproof. Pergo Elements. <laughs> Come see us at Floor and Home. Let us help create your space. 4 News Now is brought to you by the Satay Bistro. We are in for one awesome weekend and a great start to October. Above average warmth, lots of sunshine, and the stormy weather that we saw yesterday, more of an aberration than a pattern. Stormy weather going to be staying away for a little while longer. That said, we will see some cloud cover from this storm still hanging around Montana and Wyoming, just spinning around down there. And so a little bit of moisture is going to creep across the mountains. It'll just be clouds, however. We might see a shower or two on the Montana border. And uh, as we head through tomorrow, you can see this is Saturday evening. Maybe we get a sprinkle in the Camas Prairie, but everywhere else, sunshine, beautiful conditions. Just a stray little cloud as this thing continues to spin around our neighbors to the east. And so by the time we get to the start of the week, 
It is not anywhere close to us. Now, as we head for the first part of your weekend, a nice little breeze out of the north and the northeast. That will give a little bit of a fall tinge to the air because the temperatures feel a little bit more like late summer and right on kind of the edge of fall because we're back up into the middle and upper 70s around the inland northwest for the afternoon and we'll be in the upper 60s by lunchtime. So I think you're definitely gonna notice the warmth, especially when we've kind of had big jumps in temperature each day at the back end of this week. And so here are our highs for tomorrow in the metro, 76 in Coeur d'Alene, but very close to 80 degrees in Spokane Valley in Liberty Lake and in downtown Spokane, the West Plains comfortably in the mid 70s along with places uh, like Spirit Lake. Take a little bit of a zoom out and we'll show you some spots that'll hit the 80s tomorrow. Colville, Omac, Grand Coulee, all the way down to the Tri-Cities and the LC Valley also will pop up to around 80 degrees and that is going to spread as the days go by and we continue to warm up day by day. We're going to call for 77 in the Spokane region for Sunday. You can't complain about weekend weather like this. It looks amazing. Temperatures will briefly drop into the 40s, but we'll be spending most of our early mornings and our late evenings in the 50s. So here is the broad the broad outlook here where we do get up towards 80 degrees. That's 10, 12 degrees above our average this time of the year. We hang out there for a couple of days, a slow cool down, but not all that much as we head into next Thursday and next Friday. So that is a warm, not all that fall like forecast, but you know what? We'll take it. We can take some more great sunrises like this. Thanks to Mimi in Colbert sent us this on KXLY.com. Multi-layered clouds with the sunrise and Pretty neat balcony, too. I'm kind of jealous there. That is not a bad pool. Not a bad pool at all. Thank you, Matt. Well, we don't need a jacket. We just saw the seven-day forecast. Not in our, our cards, at least for the next couple of days. But we are going to be collecting heavy winter coats for kids, and that starts tomorrow. We're collecting new and gently used jackets. It's our annual Coats for Kids drive. To find out where you can donate, head kxy.com slash coats for kids. That's also the place to find out where to pick up a coat come November. Well, Green Bluff Farms are bursting at the seams for all of the fun. Every weekend in October, Walter's Fruit Ranch is celebrating their Harvest Fall Festival. And you can pick your own apples. They have pumpkins, sunflowers. Kids, like my daughter, loves petting the sheep or getting lost in the corn maze. Or there's another little maze out there, too. I think your All that rain we had this spring, it's the densest uh, corn maze I've ever seen. It's going to be hard to find your way out. It is hard to find your way out. My <laughs> husband did get lost. Aaron was trying to I was trying to sneak that in. Let people know. He did get lost in there. It was funny. Jason Morrell says you can guarantee your spot by buying a parking pass online since Green Bluff is so popular in the fall. It's going to be very popular this weekend. Head on over to KXLY.com to see all the details on Walter's Fall Festival. Well, now is also the perfect time to take in the fall colors, and they're popping up all over the country. You can even plan your leaf leering. Or leaf, some people say leaf peeping, oh. autumn outing with precision. Thanks to an interactive map available at SmokyMountains.com, that will help pinpoint when and where the most festive colors are. My favorite is Lithia Park in Oregon, but I haven't been here through the fall yet, so I'll have to see what compares. We have a lot of good spots I out can't here. Wait. Well, the first full week of fall is coming to an end, and over the next few weeks, the inland northwest will be filled, like we're saying, with all sorts of beautiful colors. Tonight, we're heading east to give you a preview of what you can expect to see when the leaves begin to change. Let's go for a ride on the Air 4 drone over Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> artist specifically, color is what motivates me. Color is what brings me life and joy. Watching all of the colors change, especially around Coeur d'Alene and around the lake, um, is just amazing. And here you get like the bright orange and yellows and then you'll see that reflected in the lake. So we just have so many amazing scenes around here that get you excited for fall. My favorite spot is the Centennial Trail leading out to Higgins Point around the lake. You get those big leafy trees and right now they're bright yellow and bright orange. 
I am a painter and my paintings are all about celebrating the Pacific Northwest. So I love the Pacific Northwest, born and raised. It brings me so much joy to be able to try to capture some of that on canvas. So I paint a lot of local scenes. As an artist, I'm just very inspired by color and I'm inspired by the beauty around us, the mountains, the trees, the rivers and lakes. So that's what most of my paintings focus on. My students here at the Croc Center, I always ask them, what's your favorite thing about fall? And all of them said the changing of the leaves and jumping in the leaves and yeah, it's kind of bringing joy to everybody. It's so beautiful, yeah. I love Coeur d'Alene, I love the whole Pacific Northwest. We're so blessed here. I can't think of a single person who doesn't like the fall leaves changing color. It's just magical. It is pretty magical. It changes everything. Well, yeah. hey, what were you going to oh, say? Oh, no, no, I'll tell you later in the break. It's <laughs> not safe for television. <laughs> Okay. Maybe <laughs> at kidding. this new restaurant. Hey, you guys, this is really cool. It's in downtown Spokane. It's called De España, and it just opened in the old Incrediburger and Eggs building. You know where that is. I do. They say the cuisine is Spanish-influenced with a Pacific Northwest flair. They specialize in small plates, perfect for trying out what's on the menu. It's going to be like kind of family-style-esque, you know, order a bunch of small plates everybody shares. That's head chef Eric Strand Hagen. He says he's really about the dining experience. You know, the ambiance. Mm, yes. The meal takes a little longer, so reservations are recommended. Well, we had a pretty good start of the show with those highlights from the Mariners. We also have more highlights on the way. And they're even better because they're local with Alex Crescenti. It's our Friday night exciting sports, sports extra. <laughs> There we go. Got it. Got it. It's fine. Friday Night Sports Extra. I'm not sure how we're supposed to top the Mariners. I really don't, but we got a good slate of games here as we're the middle of the high school football season already. Hey, some high schools are looking to make the playoffs. They haven't been on a 21-year drought like the Mariners, though. We got the highlights coming up next. Download the 4 News Now app today. The Inland Empire 6. Six local Honda dealerships dedicated to putting your keister in a Honda. And your keister will thank you for it because it'll be riding in comfort, style, and America's most fuel-efficient full-line automaker. And that can save your keister at the gas pumps. Not to mention every Honda is packed with high-tech safety features that keep all your little keisters safe and happy. See your local Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Inland Northwest. These doors are closed because it's too dangerous to ask employees to work here anymore. Think about that. For decades, Patty Murray has spearheaded reckless policies that lead to shortages, inflation, and so much crime that you can't even get a cup of coffee from the hometown shop on Capitol Hill, even if you could still afford it. 30 years in the Senate, and this is what she has to show for it? If she won't do the job, I will. I'm Tiffany Smiley, and I approve this message. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual, but one day this farmer will use augmented reality to help ensure the best yield. Urban planners will model traffic solutions to help decrease commute times. Exploring a spacecraft in a museum is one thing, but one day the metaverse will help students learn about the rings of Saturn. The metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. Democrats in Washington are threatening our way of life. Reckless spending fueling inflation. Shutting down energy production here at home. A push to defund the police. Kathy McMorris Rogers is fighting every day to stop them and protect Eastern Washington. Cutting spending to curb inflation. Unleashing American energy production. And making sure law enforcement has the resources they need. Kathy McMorris Rogers, our voice. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers, and I approve this message. 4 News Now is brought to you by End the Violence.
Well, welcome into another edition of Friday Night Sports Extra. If you're looking for the Mariners postgame celebration, this is the wrong channel, but you can hold on to that Modelo in your hand. Keith, it's going to be fine. We're going to a lot of highlights here, and we'll get back to your celebration. You can go on with your night. It's going to be great. But for now, we're in the middle of the high school football season. Hard to believe we're halfway through it. And we got a lot of good matchups here. A lot of playoffs on the line. Never too soon for that. Let's head out to the Valley where we got Meade and Central Valley. Maybe a game for the top of the division. Who knows there? But Meade with the ball first. They're going to try to pitch the ball here. Oh, well, there we go. Meade's going to try to pitch the ball. And it's going to hit the turf. Evan Bush, Ethan Bush is there to fall on it. Bears got that ball. Bears couldn't get much going, and they would have to settle for about a 37-yard field goal. That's the first points of the game. CV up 3-0 in this one. Panthers just inside the 10-yard line now. Johnny Tallarico, he comes up just short of the goal line there. Oh, just inches short. And so they quickly run up to the line. Our camera guy's going to get fooled here, and it's going to be Colby Danielson getting in, and that's a score. And now making it a 7-3 Panthers lead. And Meade goes on to maybe pull off an upset. Some would consider that an upset. Central Valley playing and really hot to begin the season. Maybe cooling off at this point. Let's stay in the Valley. We got Ferris and University. A couple of teams just maybe hoping to make the playoffs at this point. University up 26-12 at the half. Now with the ball first uh, down. And it's going to be Jalen King. He scampers down. And he's got that 15-yard horse collar to go with it. So some more yardage and they will take it. a couple plays later it's gonna be Caleb Walcott he connects with Jalen King for the score there Ooh, burning the defender diving across the pylon touchdown there Saxon's ball now they're gonna to have to hand it off to Noah Potter but somewhere in the mix a player uh, the ball comes loose and Cohen Fisher scoops it up and gets the score Titans putting them up big and University going to go on to win this one. Ferris, just a difficult season. But hey, they were they put up 26 points. Bad news, you gave up 47 there. We've got a couple more games coming up after the break. Stay with us. Tonight, we say goodbye to Brooklyn. No one, no one loves the roar of the crowd more than you. Than Will Arnett. Than Will Arnett. Than Will yeah. Arnett. This is so much better than L.A. Just move to New York. Stream 4 News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Foothills Mazda. I feel married. And I'm very happy. Me too. I'm hurt. I can't hear you. You're breaking up. Lim. Code silver. Sean, you cannot go down there. Dr. Lim, they need my help. I have three hostages. Look at me. The Good Doctor, season premiere Monday on ABC and stream on Hulu. There's a new face in local news. Kirsten O'Connor joins Aaron Luna and Chris Crocker weeknights on 4 News Now. Committed to our community, invested in you and your family's safety. Get to know Kirsten O'Connor weeknights on 4 News Now. My uh, son's name was Carson. He was just the light of my life. His anxiety and his inability to sleep caused him to purchase a pill from Snapchat, and we know that it's what killed him. Congresswoman McMorris Rogers is bringing awareness to this. She personally reached out to me. She took the time to hear Carson's story. She has been driven in trying to prevent further loss. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers, and I approve this message. If you're turning 65 soon or over 65 and planning to retire, now's the time to learn more about an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare and get help protecting yourself from the out-of-pocket costs Medicare doesn't pay. Because the time to prepare is before you go on Medicare. Don't wait. Get started today. Call United Healthcare for your free decision guide. Now, you may be wondering why I'm back on set, and that is because I have to keep our friend Alex here 
unbiased as he reads these next highlights, and that's going to be hard to do. Yeah, we do our best here, but we got a matchup out in Coeur d'Alene here this evening that near and dear to my heart. No because, favorites, Alex. Yeah, well, the, the Vikings were playing host to the Union Titans out of Camas, Washington. That is the 2018 state champion Union Titans for you. Lincoln oh, Victor oh, oh, led them to a state championship that year. Goes. Now with the Cougs, but who, who's counting anyway? But anyway, uh, opening drive to the, for the Vikings, Jamison Kazar trying to find someone downfield. He's met by Taylor Lepic. He's there to meet him for the sack. A couple plays later, though, they make it up. Cruz Wheeler punches it in from a few yards out. It's going to stare down our camera. Yeah, yeah, he knows what's up. And the Vikings had the lead, but Union gets the ball back. Tyson Fewer with the ball, runs to the outside, gets the nice little first down there. Union in business. They'll have to set up a Cody Zanar. He's going to be breaking tackles. Oh, my goodness, bouncing off kids. Someone call Kyle uh, Brandt because that is an angry run. Vikings not going away, though. Carson Spielman on the next drive. It's going to take the handoff, go to the outside, and breaks the tackle. Crosses the plane, touchdown, Vikings take yeah, the lead, good, but Vikings. look at that, job, look Vikings. at that. It's Union doubling them up, oh my getting the win, coming into Idaho, claiming the state. We'll take Washington and Idaho while the we're at it. The fighting Alex Crescenti. That's right. Well, across town, Sandpoint taking on Lake City. Homecoming for the Timberwolves there. Opening drive for them. The second half, it's going to be Max Frank with the carry. He will not go down, breaking a couple tackles. The third one finally gets him down. That's a first down for Sandpoint. A few plays later, it's going to be Frank again. Goes the outside, gets, his, uh, gets past everyone. And a Bulldogs touchdown. They're just running away with it at this point. And Timberwolves trying to get into it, trying here. Well, on the next drive, it's going to be Zach Johnson. A little bit of a desperate throw with those wet conditions. Uh, yeah, he slips, falls, you know, could have maybe get a first down there on that solid footing. That's going to set up this Jackson Pettit. He's going to roll out, roll out there. And that ball comes out real funny. That quite the duck. And yep, there's Kobe Barlow for the pick. Bulldogs would punch it in on the next drive, and they win this one big 51 to 13. You see why they went to the state championship game just a year ago. Stay with us for more. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. New America believes in and supports that mission. I met Chris through a phone call. He was talking to me about his landscaping company and he was looking to get some financing. What I like about New America is when it comes to decision making, it's right down the hall. And we're able to meet his needs within a month. Thanks to Joe Biden, food, fuel, everything costs too much. His energy policies and massive spending spree are driving skyrocketing prices, fueling the worst inflation in decades. Two years ago, we were a self-sufficient, energy-independent, energy-exporting nation. Today, our energy production has been crippled. I'm Mike Crapo. I approve this message. Let's stop the spending free-for-all, let loose American energy, and fix inflation. Trends come and go, but luxury's always in style. Now's your chance to buy beautiful Care Stand flooring at a price you can afford. During National Care Stand Month, you can save on Care Stand flooring. Elevate your decor with the designs and quality of Care Stand carpet, or choose from Care Stand's Luxcraft luxury vinyl tile collections. Don't miss your chance to live beautifully with Care Stand. Hurry in now to Skelton's Carpet One in Lewiston. or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now. Hey, welcome back. We were just talking about what we're doing this weekend. Sounds like there's a Cougs homecoming mm. game. That's mm. going to be a good uh, celebration time. Oh, yeah. And absolutely perfect weather for that as well. 
Hopefully they do better than the Huskies do. Oh, Ooh. someone roots against the Cougs here. I don't know who that is, but I Wonder. do like going to Green Bluffs. Are, so are the Huskies frauds is the question we need to be asking going into the weekend. <laughs>